um, on the 8th, it's probably going to get um, shot um, in Trickle and Tank, or they're going to shoot him from outside again, so it's going to get Oh, right wow. Square. So we'll send you information, all the speakers are going to information about that. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. And then we'll give them some more parts. Right. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. <laughs> that was all planned. As uh, parents, we are always willing to give our, our lives for our children. Uh, in my case, uh, oh, goodness, uh, my son was born to save my life. Um, I had preeclampsia 15 years ago. I had preeclampsia, and that is a uh, illness that um, starts shutting my organs um, because I'm pregnant. And the, it was at 28 weeks. For help, you know, full pregnancy is 40 weeks. So 12 weeks before um, my son was due. Uh, the doctor said that to save my life, he had to be born. He weighed less than two pounds. And that's my husband's hand, and he's not a giant. <laughs> um, if you see a baby this size, uh, the doctor said, you know, the probability of survival is pretty good. It's about 85%. But the probability of him having a normal life is also very, very small. Uh, he's having to develop his organs outside. He is being touched before. His skin is fully developed. His, his eyes are getting light before uh, they're developed. Uh, his lungs are getting air before they're developed. And, um, you know, everything has to be developed outside. So probability of him everything developing good is, is not very, very good. Um, I have four engineering degrees, and my concentration is in ergonomics and human factors. So my life was, and my profession, was to make everybody's life better, prevent a lot of musculoskeletal problems, um, and having a baby like this, when you see them in an incubator where they're isolated, where they can't, you know, how can you show them that you love them? How do you know you love them, but how do they know that you love them? So I am Colombian, and when I was a little girl over there, um, kangaroo care was started. Kangaroo care is when you hold the baby skin to skin to the chest. And um, I knew the moms have superpowers because I've seen kids running around and they fall, fall and they, they cry and they go to mom and they, you're okay, right? <laughs> so we have, we have a superpower of making baby, well, making our children or our loved ones feel better. Um, but how did he know that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a loved one? Um, first of all, I didn't hold him when he was the sickest. He didn't know that he was because I was not allowed to. Um, I abandoned him every day because I couldn't stay there. There were no places to stay. But he didn't know that either. So the challenge was to show him how he was part of a family. He was part of a... Um, you know, that this is not the world. This is not the world I envisioned for him. And by the way, the top right is not me. 
<laughs> so, um, so we knew the superpowers of moms, right? And I didn't know then, but the babies know their moms. And even if 150 people hurt him and touch them, they know that the mom, you know, they, they realize who the mom is. What we wanted for sure, and as soon as they're born, is to introduce that as a source of comfort because we are a family. So um, I've heard from many times going to the doctors and even talking to them here, they, they said, you know, if you relax, it will hurt less. Right? Have you heard that? Well, how do you relax a baby? You know, how do you, you know, you can't, you can't pat them because that's overstimulating. You can Skype them, which that one didn't exist 15 years ago. Um, so holding them, holding him, and 15 years ago, it was something just nice to do. There was no evidence but it was something that it was nice to do. And it was, you know, I, we did it for five, seven hours every day. Um, and he reacted really nicely. You know, he was calm, he was sleeping. Um, what I had to do was basically engineer a world that would be nurturing for him. Um, and because we couldn't do it naturally, we just have to do it by design. So, you know, we would hold him. The nurses taught me how to use my hands to comfort him. And uh, one of the questions that I asked one of the nurses was, what is a common denominator of these babies when they're born and when they grow? Um, and she said, they don't like to be touched. So they have aversion to touch. And I'm thinking, I'm Colombian. I'm Hispanic. We don't know the definition of personal space. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, and I can't imagine not only giving him a life without enjoying human touch, but having my life without touching him. So it was an art and revolution. Um, I was there 10 to 12 hours every day. And um, like I said, the nurses taught me how to use my hands. And if you see on the top, in the, in the very bottom on the left, there is a little glove. And I made that glove because I wanted Zachary to feel me when I wasn't there. Uh, I couldn't stay, right? And I knew I could use my hands, but who was gonna do that when I wasn't there? And the nurses loved it. Um, so obviously having Zachary uh, and having a child changes your personal life. But um, and this, you know, I would leave the Zachary or well, the, the little hand <clears throat> as if I was staying with him. Um, it had my scent, so I slept, actually my husband and I, my scent by putting it on the chest. Um, I didn't know he knew me, um, so it was just not just to comfort him, but it was very comforting for me. Um, nurses could see the change on Zach in all the monitors that he was hooked up, hooked onto. What they couldn't see was what he was doing for me. Um, I had to smile because I wanted to make sure that he knew that it was not his fault, that he was in pain. And everything that the mom feels, you know, is translated, or the dad is translated to the baby. So we want to keep the, you know, the energy high. Um, then something happened. Um, actually, two things happened when he was in the hospital. One was a flood that shut down his hospital and all the life support equipment that he had. He was three weeks old. And the other one was 9-11. He was also in the hospital um, when he was, uh, you know, when that happened. But this basically changed my professional life too. Because 
We had to keep Zachary alive by hand for nine hours until he was evacuated. I held Zachary on skin to skin to give him warmth. Um, and my husband Larry and nurses took turns. Actually, he got a crash course on how to keep, help him breathe manually. Uh, from that, obviously, Zachary's lungs collapsed. Uh, you know, a lot of complications. But that's when I made a promise to help babies on his behalf. Uh, and that, you know, his pain and struggle to survive were not going to be in vain. So, um, being an engineer, we want to go through evidence. And babies need sleep to develop. And if you ever have been in a hospital, I don't think you know you, know you, you can't sleep, right? If you are in intensive care, then you're not going to sleep either. And this is where Zachary was, in intensive care. And this is all the things that you develop when you're sleeping. So we need to help babies sleep. So there is evidence also that um, there is, you know, apnea and bradycardia, which are two things that babies have, um, can maybe be prevented by different um, research that we're doing with the products that we develop. And, you know, just for example, you have the control group, and if we add the scent of the mom, it's not significantly different. But if we use only one product with the scent of the mom over and over again, when the nurses don't have to have any um, personal decision on what to use, when and what, from all the devices, then babies in this study had zero apnea and bradycardia events, which is huge. Um, holding babies is zero to three months after due date, but babies are falling from the parents because we fall asleep, right? So instead of not holding the babies, we're going to secure them and give them an environment where we actually provide the skin to skin, which is evidence-based. Um, this is a product called the Zaki, obviously, um, name after Zachary. And if we can do that with a small baby that is developed, that we can help them breathe, we can help them sleep, we can help them develop and be like my, my Zachary, imagine what we can do with babies that are hard to console, babies that have born, are born with narcotic dependency, um, babies that are in any unit of the hospital, or babies that, you know, children that just want to have mom when she's traveling, when she has separation anxiety. Um, so, this is my Zachary. They told me he couldn't, he was not going to be able to uh, probably, you know, do any athlete, be an athlete because he had damage on his lungs and he ran, he did bike um, 100 miles in the MS 150 and raised $1,500 for, yeah. And he, he came home with um, brittle bones uh, five months after he was born and he was a uh, champion of um, wrestling here in Houston. So, you know, we can, if we cannot nurture them naturally, um, we need to nurture them by design, but the option is not not to nurture them. Uh, we need to nurture babies, and we need to nurture moms and families, and everybody is, um, you know, we need to nurture everyone. And um, it is absolutely my pleasure to work on behalf of Zachary. And Zachary was here a volunteer today. Can you raise? <laughs>